that someone in this house was gonna stab someone. And that came true. And then all of a sudden she turned just evil. What up home slices, what up home fries, and what up homes of other varieties. So in today's video, we are going to be reacting to another Foreman Brothers video. Yay! We love the Foreman Brothers here. And we're going to be reacting to their newest episode, season 18, episode 3, called A Real Life Demon, A Family Extremely Haunted. And basically, it is in this apartment that actually sits next to the lot where Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment used to be where he murdered a bunch of his victims. So that's interesting in of itself. But so yeah, I'm going to insert quite a few clips. Some will have sound, some will not have sound and yada yada yada. And if you've been here before, you know the drill. If you don't know the drill, I'm a psychic medium and I pretty much react to the video I have and just give my psychic opinion, explain what I see, how things work, and so on. So uh, here we go. Alright, so right when they like move the camera right to the house, right, the first introduction of the house immediately immediately i get lower back pain stomach pain and then chest pain and head pain strange right it's like everything in my body was like um but i will say then when we pan to the client you know she's got these big beautiful eyes but as i'm looking into them i'm seeing some of the trauma that she's experienced in her life. And of course, I'm not gonna share what those traumas were cause uh, they're traumatic, but I can see the negative energy inside her aura. The energy is blackish with some brown hues here and there. That's very smoky and has this gritty texture as well. Um, it's not super thick because there are some parts that I can see through. started turning like this and then back and just stopped. I woke up with bruises one day on on my shoulder, on my arm, I mean right here. And there were dark bruises. Uh, there were scratches too on my right foot. I don't know where the scratches came from. There was like a whole bunch. I always wake up sometimes with scratches on me. And I always feel something touching me in bed. Then there's something that is next to me now that I actually have seen that shows itself to me. I felt kind of possessed. I thought it was possessed. I thought my daughter was laughing at me and I went upstairs and Jade's like, Mom, Maddie's not here. She's across the street. And I was rocking on the floor back and forth and I'm like, this is getting crazy. So you feel like something physically possessed you? Yeah. It wasn't even me speaking. It was like a different voice, like, get out of here. She's like, Mom, are you okay? I'm like, no, she's laughing at me. I've seen a man, yes. I see stuff in pictures I take. Three times I've seen that. So, what do you think this is? I have no idea. The girl that lived here before me, she calls herself a witch. The Jesus picture I had hanging up, the Christ picture broke. Glass went everywhere. And stuff here before we moved in. And I've asked that pastor to come help and he's, he won't come in this house. And I want to leave everything here. I told them, if we move, I'm not bringing nothing from this house. It can all stay depressed. Around here, so the bruises, scratches, and other marks on the body, especially noticing 
them right after waking up can definitely be the result of a spirit or entity feeding off the person's energy. Not all negative spirits or entities feed in this manner where they leave behind like um, wounds and bruises and things, but actually the type of spirit or entity that has this type of effect on an individual when it feeds also tends to oppress their victim in sexual ways, unfortunately, not just your stereotypical paranormal activity. So you can have regular paranormal activity with this type of haunting, of course. And she does. She's got like the knocks and you can hear the sounds, you can hear the voices. The reason for that has to do with the individual's traumas. And I've said before that negative entities are attracted, of course, to the um, individual's traumas. And then from there, depending on the person's like abilities or extrasensory perception abilities. So that just means people that are a little extra more sensitive and can perceive energies through one of their senses. So seeing, hearing, cognizantly, yada, yada, yada. So they will tailor their haunting based off of what will be more effective based off of how they can perceive those, what you call it, attacks, how they perceive the jabs that the entity does to the person. And in addition to like um, using their traumas as a way to figure out what things to use or elements that they use to trigger them more because the more you trigger someone, the more they react, the more they produce the negative energy, which then just continues that endless cycle of negative energy production and feeding. That is what they do. The entity can create illusions that look so real, which can make a person react in response to what they are experiencing because they perceive it to be real. This can be dangerous. And how some people can be convinced to commit atrocities even if it was never in their nature to do so. It's actually very similar to the Arnie Johnson case, The Devil Made Me Do It. Now, of course, you're gonna have some skeptics that are like, oh no, he was just bad and then he killed someone because of, you know, whatever motive. But I've experienced and even analyzing that case, I was able to put myself in that person person's shoes and oh boy, it's scary. And so it's similar here in terms of the way the entity haunts or oppresses. And so that's why it can be dangerous. But Arnie perceived he was being attacked, so he went to defend himself which resulted in the murder of Alan Bono. So the thing is, if the entity put an illusion in front of her that she was being attacked, the same thing could have happened to her. Thank God it didn't. So this is more within the stages of influence, but when she talks about saying things involuntarily, like it's this weird voice coming out of her, I see the spirit or entity blending with her energy and jumping her. So what spirits and entities do, especially the more malevolent ones, doesn't have to be just demonic. People think that demonic entities are the only entities that can possess a person. That is not true. That is something I've learned within the last two to three years, probably three years. But essentially the, the entity can quickly blend with that person's aura and energy and kind of like temporarily push out their consciousness and force their consciousness through. But in this scenario, she was able to fight it be, and come to her senses and her even her kids were like, hey, are you okay? And I think that's when she realized that something wasn't right. And that's when she knew to start fighting it. When I say a spirit jumped someone I am technically referring to temporarily possessing. Um, it's not full-on possession. It's just like a temporary 
temporary. It's just a temporary form of it. And it's not the full thing because the person has some element of control because they aren't completely removed. So it's like a battle within her of it like being like move and it trying to like talk through her and then she's like get out of here and like I don't know the best that's the best way I can explain it before it jumps her it sets her up to become possessed so what does it do it sends her these hallucinations and then they feel so real she then believes she's being possessed but at that moment she's not but the moment she believes she's being possessed is that opportunity, that gateway, that doorway, that that invitation, essentially, to the entity that allows it to jump her in the first place. And then that's where there's, like, a battle of, like, like, I'm gonna talk through you and do these things. And then she's like, no, I'm gonna take back control. And it's like that spiritual warfare within her. But this is a technique that I learned within the last two or three years that some nasty entities do because, first of all, it happened to me three times. So I got smart. Obviously, I didn't get possessed three times. It tried to convince me I was being possessed. And when the first time I was like, oh, shit, my spirit guides were like, "Uh uh-uh, hold on take a deep breath. You're not being possessed. It's tricking you. So thank God. But um, each time my guides were there to help me through it. When I had that dream about my daughter, like my daughter would start freaking out. My youngest daughter, she was so sweet. And then she just turned her face in my dream, just turned so evil. The dreams I've been having have come true. She needs help. that someone in this house was gonna stab someone. And that came true. And something got in her. I don't know if that can really happen, but. And then all of a sudden she turned just evil. And last night she was evil. And I even had to go to the hospital and stabbed me and she was stabbing herself. So it's all these nightmares we're having and, and bad things. This house is creepy. And I wish we could move, but we can't can't afford to move. The woman becomes more aware of the entity and begins fighting it off, especially the more physical manifestations and the hallucinations. Because of this, the entity begins switching up its tactics to affecting her more mentally. Because it's... (sighs) When you're not seeing the entity, you have a lot of doubt within yourself of, am I crazy? Is there actually something there? And so it was more effective in messing with her mental health, unfortunately. But because it didn't get as far as it wanted to, it began targeting her more sensitive child. It knew by targeting the child, it would have even more success, causing pain within the family, but also because a child is more vulnerable. Now, again, I don't know how old her child is. She could be a teenager. She could be really young. I'm not sure. But regardless of age, the entity saw that specific one to be the weaker one, but also not have a clear understanding of the spiritual and psychic side of things. And it kind of, I would say she's very spiritually vulnerable. These people have extrasensory perception abilities. Maybe not to the degree of a full-blown medium, but they do have some sensitivities to energy. And when you're somebody like that, it can bring things to you. It's not the person's fault at all. That's just how things go. They do state witchcraft being used in this building before they moved in, which is not great. Now, don't get me wrong. Not all witchcraft is bad. 
you have so many different versions of it, okay? You have white magic, you have dark magic, you have things in between that, and it all goes based off of intention and what you're trying to do, but from the energy in that space didn't feel quite good. And I know the Foreman brothers said something about satanic rituals and maybe they saw the type of pentagram that was drawn in the basement and I feel like there was one upstairs too, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, my memory's not the greatest, but I know there was one in the basement for sure. Of the carpet? Candles there or did a ritual or something? I don't know. I just know it's driving me crazy. I don't know what that is by me. I don't know. I wish the pastor would have just came and cleansed it. Just, I like what you guys do. So when he said no, that's when I contacted you guys. And when I went out to talk to the pastor, he actually took off in his car. Because he knows something about this place I don't yet, but I know enough. The sound of a child, I did hear it periodically through the video. The thing is very, it's complicated because there is some residual energy there, of course. But the entity is also, it's mimicking it essentially, which is off-putting. And I feel like too, it's the same trick almost. A lot of these negative entities use, they pretend to be a child as their way to get those to feel like it's harmless and want to communicate with it more because when you communicate that's a form of invitation saying you want it there so you can talk to it and so a lot of times the negative stuff will turn into children and be less assuming so but I feel like some of it's residual and some of it is the entity mimicking the residual and the little girl or child's voice. Also, the pastor saying no to help is pretty common as a response. So the thing is, if you're looking for a church to bless your space or cleanse your space or what have you, a lot of times there's only specific kinds that do that kind of thing. So I'm guessing this one is one of those ones that don't. Um, but I do know like there's some Pentecostal churches that will. Um, you have to do your research. Some Catholic churches will as well. But I know like when I have really severe cases, of someone who needs a deliverance or exorcism and I can't be there in person because it's too far. I can't travel across the United States or into another country. Um, I will help research places that will do that for the client. And let me tell you, it's hard. It's hard to find places, but it can be done. So 15, 34 minutes in, chest pain, I start getting, I start taking screenshots of places where I feel there are things. However, when I went back at the pictures and analyzed them, I couldn't catch the spirit or entities that I had been seeing, but that's pretty normal. Sometimes I'll get lucky and I'll be like, oh my God, I found it, like in the mind seed one. But it's actually pretty rare for me to be able to go back in the footage and find a clear picture that isn't one of my major skills now that's chastity's skill not mine when they're asking the name of the child i'm bad with names i am terrible with names but i will say i did hear the name chris don't know what that means it could mean anything chris is a common name 2156 I did see a man clear as day in the shadows, but that was one of the times I took the picture and I went back to look and I, I couldn't, 
I couldn't get the details in the picture. So, and then Josh does validate the chest pain. I'm feeling it again now, actually. And the energy is definitely much thicker in the basement. And my head pain starts getting worse. And I kept noticing there was a person under the window that they pointed at. I did see a pair of eyes. They were like this. And then the there was like this dark brown-ish, maroon-ish, burgundy color, like, ring around the irises, and then the pupil were the same color, and then the inside of the iris was, like, this pale, it wasn't quite white, it was, like, this off-white color, like, a beige almost. I did not like it. The hair is a dark brown color that looks kind of straight, but hasn't been brushed in a while, so it looks knotted up and matted in a couple of places. Oh, that's right. It was under the window, and it looked like a child. It looked like a little girl, maybe like 9 to 12, um, around that age. But her hair's like in front of her face a little bit, enough to you can see the eyes. And it's all matted and yucky. She's wearing what looks similar to a Holy Communion dress, but it's disheveled, messy, ripped, and has stains in some places. She's wearing matching socks with the lace on the top and black buckle shoes. Definitely a portal in the basement. It's giving me more chest pain and left arm pain. So that's at that point, I'm like, mm, I wonder if somebody had a heart attack because to me, those are indicators of a heart attack. And there are definitely more than one spirit and entity there. There are multiple. There is a boatload. And plus, I was seeing a lot of stuff on the outside. Like, in that lot, there were a few earthies hanging around. But the other issue is the portal can bring in things from all different time periods. And even, you know, closer time periods. And those that had recently died, like... That portal, I've seen a lot of portals, and many portals are very different from one another. This one seemed to be focused more on, like, earthies. I didn't see a lot of, like, um, non-human stuff. Actually, happened to see, I think, almost all earthies in this situation. I do believe it was either Josh or Sean said they felt like someone here had a heart attack. That's because... I forget which ones are clairsentient. I did a video on them. You can watch that if you want on like potential abilities that they have. But they are very um, in tune with energies. And even the spirit box confirmed the heart attack thing. So I'm pretty sure someone had a heart attack. But it doesn't necessarily mean it happened in the house. It just means that the earthy that came through the portal that's there could have been the one that suffered a heart attack doesn't mean it happened in the house though I mean of course if they have record of someone having a heart attack in the house well then it's that but you don't necessarily have to have someone in the house that have ha that had a heart attack oh my god that's right and this video made me really sleepy not because it was boring but because of the entity it was so draining I think I slept a total of 16 hours one day and like 14 hours the next day oh my god <laughs> and then Josh he pulls this thing out of his pocket and it's these rocks from the empty lot from Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. Like, I guess when they bulldozed it, there were some rocks behind. And then Sean's like, <laughs> Sean, Sean's reaction is just funny. Oh yeah, the deja vu comment that Josh makes because he feels like he's been in the house before. Okay, I have answers for you, Josh. So there are many different reasons a person can have deja vu. In your experience specifically, it's because time is not linear. It's happening all at once. So technically, the Foreman brothers have been here before. <laughs> this is where it gets a little complicated. And sometimes it's like your consciousness is like catching up. It's freaky. 
All right, so I'm in editing mode. As you can tell, my lipstick's not on my face anymore. So I wanted to expand a little bit more on this deja vu situation with Josh. Um, I just happened to get more visions of it. And to further explain Josh and, you know, Sean and Rocky, you've been at the house before on Astrorom and time is not linear, it's happening all at once. So to break this down further, you first cleanse the space on the astral realm. And a lot of times, like when Chas and I do our work, if we are remote or even if we're gonna go to the location, what happens is it's like we do like this cleaning run through on the astral realm first before we go physically there. And it's to make sure you get all forms of that space and all angles of that space. So you wanna make sure you hit it from multiple rounds and different aspects. So you're hitting it from the astral and you're hitting it from the physical earth realm. And so that's why you feel like you've been there before because you have and to go along more with the time isn't linear thing um, because you did it already because as this video is out, they have already done this location in their investigation and cleansing. So they already did it. However, they're still doing it now and they're doing it even before now. If you've ever seen the movie, Everything Everywhere at Once, just think of that. <laughs> so they've already did it and they haven't done it yet and they're doing it now. <laughs> Does that make sense? So that, and then plus the whole astral thing, you guys do your cleansings astrally, whether you are aware of it or not. So that is why specifically in this moment, you had this deja vu. Let's have a conversation about the portal in the basement. And I drew a little diagram as I do, but the rituals done inside the house did indeed open a portal. The basement is definitely where the biggest and most intense one is, and even the focal point to where things are coming from, but it's interesting because of how it looks. You know what? I'm just going to insert a picture somewhere in here. So we have the basement, we have the ground floor. Floor two, and I think there's a third floor on top of that. The portal looks like a Hershey kiss. It does. And the fattest part of the Hershey kiss is on the lowest floor, which would be the basement. So it's this part of the portal. That's why it is so thick down there, why you feel the yuckiest and why, and why it feels the creepiest. I want to know, I feel like they said there was another pentagram upstairs, but I can't remember, like I said, but if there is, for research purposes only, I'm kind of curious to know where it is in comparison to the one in the basement, if it, like, if you put the floor stacked on top of one another, if it's, like, directly on top of it, because if so, that would make the portal look more like the Hershey Kiss. If not, um, I do think some of the portal would go into the ground floor a bit, but yeah. I notice a lot what comes through that portal are mostly earthbound spirits, but it's important to note that when portals are left open, unmonitored, regardless of original intention, they can become hijacked or tainted by negative things. So it is always imperative that all portals are closed ASAP when done being used or make sure that your practices aren't unintentionally creating them and then because you don't realize they're there that they're being left unattended due to like lack of experience, ability, etc, etc. If you have accidentally created one, it's no big deal. Just close it the second you're aware of it. 
and just be aware for next time. Shit happens. I mean, in the beginning of my journey, I didn't realize that when I was astral projecting in my room, whether I did it intentionally during meditation or when I fell asleep, that I was creating portals in my room. And uh, one night, those portals got hijacked and uh, it's a whole thing. And uh, there's a video for that. And we talk about it on the Lights of Midnight podcast. So, yeah, don't make the same mistakes that I have. The Earthies are from around the area and from slightly different time periods that are more recent. Nothing super old. So, like, I would say... I mean, yeah, probably from, like, the 50s, 60s to recent. I wasn't seeing anything, like, crazy old, like, 1900 or, like, 18 or 1700s. The dominant male energy that's oppressing the woman and her children that thing is what's turning itself into a little girl that thing is very descended is earthbound it's nasty yeah not a good not a good one okay so for my analysis summary here so this is a slightly complicated matter, but offers patterns I've seen in many other cases. The woman and her children have extra sensory perception abilities to some degree. Again, doesn't mean they're full-blown mediums, it just means they're sensitive to energies and more sensitive than the average person. The mother seems very empathic with some tendencies of clairsentience. I also feel as though she is very claircognizant and clairvoyant, along with the one child that was afflicted. They feel very claircognizant for sure, which is how the entity was able to get inside both of their heads. The reason why they all of a sudden started to have issues when they moved to this location, despite already having these sensitivities, is due to the portal in the basement. The portal allows spirits and entities to become closer or come within the layers of the earth realm, allowing anyone with energy sensitivities or abilities to perceive those energies easier than those without them. The dominant male energy that was harassing them felt like an earthbound spirit that had become descended who was attracted to her due to her traumas. It ended up oppressing the woman first, but because she was onto it and fought it off, it went to a much easier target, her child. The child was much more vulnerable spiritually and defensively, so when the spirit went to her mind, she most likely didn't understand what was going on and didn't realize she had to protect herself psychically and spiritually. But also, the spirit was able to convince her the thoughts it was putting into her mind were of her own. It's not her fault whatsoever. And if she was going through her own stressors and trauma, that made it easier for the spirit to take action. No matter what, therapy for all people involved is a great idea and I'm glad that they are doing it to help them heal their traumas, especially the new traumas they gained from this experience. From what I could see, it looks like the Foreman brothers did a great job cleansing the place because when I went in initially, it was actually kind of difficult to see if there was anything there because, you know, like I said, it was cleansed. Um, it's weird because when I astral project, I have to like it's like go back in time, even though time's happening all at once. So I had to like, when I was watching the video, focus on that time that they're in the video before they cleansed, which was easier. So that's when I was able to see the things around. But then when I went in after to um, meditate to see exactly the type of entity harassing the woman, and I'm sorry, I don't know what her name is. I think they kept her name out on purpose. And if not, Again, I'm sorry for missing that. But, um, yeah, when I went in to meditate, it was hard to see because in my mind, okay, they cleansed. <laughs> and I forgot to take it back before that. So I would say their cleansing did, it succeeded. Like, right now, at least in terms of, I don't know how long of a time period it's been since they filmed this video. It's been weeks after 
they've done it. So when I looked at that time that they cleansed, it looked like everything had been cleared out and the portal looked like it was shut as well. With that being said, I still have concerns. First and foremost, house cleansing should still be done periodically. Even the strongest ones wear off eventually. So if I were the woman, if the energy starts feeling off again, I would do a house cleansing. And if you just happen to watch my video, I have a video on how to do that. You can do it yourself, especially if you can't get a priest to help you. It should be fine if done periodically. And um, when I'm judging time in between cleansings, I go by trial and error because it's different for every person. If the person doing the cleansing in their space has a family and they don't have like extrasensory perception abilities, they might be able to get away with it longer than someone like me or the foreman, someone who's in this work or someone with abilities. You might have to um, do your cleansings more often. But so with them, they might have to do it a wee bit more often than those without abilities. Um, like I said, you have to gauge it by trial and error. You can start off, they just did a big one, so I would see, just monitor it like a month if it's good like document it if you start noticing things feeling like they're getting back to that nasty feeling I would write that down and then get your cleansing up again before it completely wears off the next concern I have is probably a more obvious one her apartment is next to the lot where Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment building sat while there are some earthies lingering around that's not really the main issue honestly it's the residual energy of that place. Especially during the time when Dahmer was active in his heinous activities. In addition to the negative um, entities involved in those acts and the ones that had been created as a result of those acts. Because when anything you do puts out energy, if you do a negative behavior that puts out energy, and if enough of that negative energy is put out, you can create a thought form. I've talked about this before. Um, it can start collecting its own consciousness based off of the energies used to make it up. And if you have um, energy sensitivities, you might pick up those things, especially when you sleep and you have nightmares and things. Okay. So that's what I'm more worried about, if anything, especially if you have children and people that don't quite know how to navigate their energy sensitivities. Do I think Dahmer's ghost is floating around causing problems around where his apartment was, is, was? No, I don't see him there at all, actually. But like I said, it's the residual energy that's pretty thick. And I'm wondering if that's why the person before the current owner did those rituals knowing that. Because they probably figured they'd get a really good result based off of the tragedies that happened. Side note to Josh, if you keep those rocks, okay, because I know you're gonna, <laughs> I highly recommend you cleanse them with Palo Santo smoke. So get a Palo Santo stick, burn it, let the smoke cleanse those rocks, and then you can um, douse them in holy water or holy oil, whatever you want, and then just put them in like a protective case and you should be good. It's They're little, it's not that bad. Um, the Foreman brothers, they do have energy sensitivities, so I would take precaution and do those things, Josh, if you watch this video. It shouldn't be that bad you're not there's no portal attached to it I think it's fine as long as you cleanse them the last concern I have is with the daughter that was influenced and possessed to attack the mother and then herself 
um it's great that she's getting therapy because that whole situation is traumatic in of itself second you don't want to have any stressors or traumas left for negative things to take a hold of and the other thing is too i think it's important for her to learn spiritual safety and defenses so this doesn't happen again i don't think it'll happen again but I'm just worried that she could be influenced down the road as she grows up by other negative energies and we do not want that. So I recommend um, she learn prayers and whatever religion you are tied to. If you are a Christian, if you teach her spiritual defense through prayers, great, great. You can also do holy oil if you're noticing the nightmares and stuff coming back do the holy oil on the chakras again if you're having that stuff come through again um means it's time to cleanse but i would say for extra precaution if you have any attacks even if you're on outside of the home holy oil is amazing and uh yeah guys that is all my notes that i have i had so many pages of notes and i will put these on patreon so for those who are my patron members, you guys can look at my notes. <laughs> but uh, hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below and I will answer them ASAP. But again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all soon. Peace out.